Hey parents, this video is for you. Uh, just some basics on what to expect with recorder at home and what comes with the recorders. This is what the students get. Their cases should have a layer name written right about here, first and last name, just to help us keep track. Since all of them are the same, it's going to be important that they always have their recorder in the case. If they leave just the recorder somewhere, it's not labeled and so there's no way of knowing which one is which. So please make sure if you see your student playing and they don't have their case, ask them where it is and make sure that they put it back into their case when they are done with it. Um, inside the recorder case, they have obviously the recorder itself. These are our Angel Halo recorders. On the recorder, there should be a fuzzy dot spot. I have the kids inventory their cases, make sure everything has what it should have. Um, I do assemble these and check these myself, but it never hurts to have a second eye. They should have a neck strap that goes along with this. Um, it's not necessary to play the recorder with the neck strap, but what that's for is in class or if they're at home and they're playing and they want to stop and take a break or move a change a page, mark something in the music to help themselves out, it just hangs there for them. To attach the neck strap, what the students do when I go over this with them the first day is they have to twist apart the head joint, set it down over the body, and then twist the head joint back on and anytime they're lining up their recorder, this tone hole should be lined up with a straight line of holes down the body of the recorder. I'm trying to get that so you can see it. So tone hole down the straight line of holes here. That means the recorder is set up and then all they have to do is pull it up to the top, put it around their neck, and they're ready to go. Uh, these do have a snap free, so if there's ever any issue with somebody getting some, it's getting pulled or it gets caught on something, it will unsnap, so it won't cause any damage to the kids. Um, we care about them. <clears throat> in there as well, there is a cleaning rod. Now, I talked to the kids about this first thing as well, but some of them forget. By itself, this cleaning rod does nothing. Um, what it, you need if you want to clean it out or swab it out to get moisture is a long, thin piece of cloth. I've done this before. You can go to a music store and buy one, or I've cut like old cotton t-shirts. Don't tend to fray too much if you cut off the bottom seam, and you can use that, and you just thread it through here, like thread through a needle. And then after playing for long periods of time, then they can just insert it into the top section and then insert it down through the bottom part of the recorder to get out the moisture. Um, there is also a little container of joint grease. Um, if you open this and you'll see it looks like chapstick, but it's not chopstick. I tell the kids that. Um, this is really only used if it's difficult to twist on or off the head joint of the recorder. Um, mostly after you give the recorder a bath, that's when it needs joint grease. Um, the, or you can wash it in the dishwasher and then afterwards it would need a little bit of joint grease. I tell the kids I always have joint grease on hand, so if they end up having to wash it in the dishwasher if they're ever sick when playing their recorder, please take it apart, set it in the top rack of the dishwasher, turn off the high heat dry, and the recorder will be washed. Or you can soak it in a sink of soapy water and then just rinse it really thoroughly afterward. Um, when they're done, it's gonna be a little tough to twist on. All you would do is put a little touch of joint grease on your finger and then just put it around this joint area right here. All it needs is a touch. If you put too much, then it clogs it up and it won't twist on either. And then you'll just be able to twist it on like that. So that's the basics of how to take care of the recorder and everything that comes with it and the purpose of it. Now, as far as practicing is concerned, I sent uh, a message that said they need to practice 20 minutes a week. It's actually better for muscle memory if they break that up into small chunks throughout the week. And practicing should sound purposeful. So if they're sitting there with their recorder at home and they're just wiggling their fingers around like this, that's not purposeful practice. They need to be doing purposeful practice. So the first couple of weeks they don't know a lot. What I tell them is to practice making nice sounds and we have a little rhythm that we do. It's uh, <clears throat> how much do does a do drop drop if do drops do drop do. And I have them do it with their tongue only on do and they go do 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 and then we talk about not singing into your recorder or speaking into your recorder, it's just the air and it should be gentle. I call it flicker candle air because if you had a candle in front of you, you should be able to do that rhythm with the do-do-do's without blowing the flame out. So it should sound like this. And that's the kind of air they put in their recorder. So the first couple of times, all they're gonna be doing is just holding the recorder and practicing 
with a nice sound. If it sounds loud, they are blowing too hard and you can remind them, I know that Miss Turner expects you to use gentle flicker candle air. It should not annoy you and hurt your ears. The steady one sound may annoy you, but <laughs> they'll learn more notes. They have to develop a good sound first. Once they learn a note, and I will teach them one the first time, but that's not their main purposeful practice for the first week. It's just making a nice sound. They could take a you know nursery rhyme they know, Mary had a little lamb, and just do 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 Mary had a little lamb on their recorder. And they could even just do it with a head joint. And I told them, uh, I'll be telling them this too. You could also tell them, this is one of the things I'm teaching them this week, is to really know if their breath support is proper. If they take just the head joint and they put it against their hand, it should make a nice low sound like this. If they overblow in the slightest, it sounds like a train whistle. And then you can tell them, whoa, that's not the right sound. And they know the right sound and they know what the target sound is. So this is one of the practice tools that I gave them for the first week when they take their recorders home that I want them to do. So if they have one of these Halo recorders from me, um, it makes it really easy to check the air. And so if they're too loud in the house, you could say, hey, take the head joint. Show me what that's supposed to sound like. Ms. Turner said it's supposed to sound cool if you do it right. Um, or not cool if you don't. Uh, they can also take it outside. It is okay to play the recorder outdoors as long as your neighbors won't be thoroughly upset. It shouldn't be so loud that it bothers them. Um, sometimes if you have pets, the dogs go crazy or the cats start meowing when they start playing recorder. I myself am a flute player, so I understand completely. Um, but it's totally okay to take the recorder outside. It's not going to hurt anything. Even if it's raining, they could go sit on the porch in some covered area. It actually sounds really cool to play recorder out in the rain. Um, so that is always an option for the kids. But Practicing really helps their muscle memory. There's not much that I can do for them if they don't develop that in 50 minutes a week. That's how much they have music class. So if they just spend three minutes each day just remembering and tell them once you learn this, this is C, and then play on your recorder. C, this is C. C. This is C. If they did that for three minutes a day for the first week, then, then when they get to music class and I say, show me C, they're going to go, boom, I've got it. Because their fingers feel that, and it's associating their brain with that motion. And if they've done it every single day, it gets easier and easier and easier. And then when we add another one, then they learn to associate that feeling. We don't really worry about the note reading until at least after Thanksgiving. Um, maybe the week before, because I want them to have a good foundation in their breath support in making a nice tone and, um, and getting all of that working first.